Welcome to another presentation in a series called Seeds for Revival. I'm so glad that you are watching today. My name is Ken Lytle, and uh, today I want to talk about natural church development. God has designed our churches to grow. I mean, they were designed to be alive, vibrant, growing. Uh, our churches were not designed to be stagnant and dead. Uh, places where people come to just feel good and uh, go home and come back from week to week. No, no. We were called to be a vibrant, growing, missional people on a mission for Jesus. And so I want to talk about natural church development. Here's a little booklet uh, put out by uh, Andrews University, the seminary. Uh, Russell Burrow, oh, there you go. You see Russell Burrow there. He is. Uh, he, he was one of the professors there at Andrews University for many years. He's done some wonderful uh, work. Has written some wonderful books. And so I encourage you to look up some of their material. Uh, but natural church development. It is a. It is a teaching. Uh, that helps to instruct churches and church leaders on how to be. Uh, naturally growing. And so uh, Russell Burrow borrows a concept from um, a theologian, Char uh, uh, Christian Schwartz, is who uh, Russell Burrow pu pulls the idea from. He then couples in the Bible and spirit of prophecy to help, uh, to help solidify this teaching of natural church development. It's very good stuff. And so there's eight characteristics of a healthy and growing church. And so within this little booklet, uh, Russell Burrow talks about that. Uh, Christian Schwartz talks about uh, these eight characteristics of a healthy and growing church. Uh, these uh, eight characteristics are, number one, empowering leadership. Number two, gift-oriented ministry. Number three, passionate spirituality. Number four, functional structures. Number five, inspiring worship. Number six, holistic small groups. Number seven, need-oriented evangelism. And number eight, loving relationships. The idea is that if, think about like a wooden bucket made up of eight uh, pieces of wood. Of course, it's all sealed so that it can uh, contain water and that if one of the the pieces of wood that make up the eight sides of this bucket if one is the lowest then that is your weakest link and that's the one you gotta focus on so you focus on uh, beefing up the, the weakest one and you need all eight to have a a balanced bucket for ministry that can hold and contain water and so if one is weak then it will then affect the overall ministry of the church. And so it's a really neat concept, something that you can uh, check into. You can just Google uh, natural church development and study it for yourself, and uh, you'll learn quite a, quite a bit about uh, church leadership and having a church that's healthy, vibrant, and growing. Okay. And so today I want to talk a little bit about holistic small groups. Holistic small groups. You know, church is not a place that we just go to once to once a week for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and then go home back to our life and take a nap and have a good meal, kind of exit out the Sabbath, and then enter into your your daily life in the secular world. Church needs to be something that we do every day that we're a part of. We're part of a group of people who love Jesus, who understand the mission that he has given us. And so holistic small groups or growth groups or small groups, however you word it, holistic small groups are is where the real church is. I mean, that's where people can be real. That's where people can open up themselves and share their weaknesses and their strengths, support each other as fellow church members. It's not going to happen in the pew. In the pew, all you're going to do is you're going to stare at the back of the head of the person in front of you. You're going to listen to some music, maybe partic participate somewhat, listen to a sermon, and go home. Okay? 
It is in the growth groups. It's in the small groups. That's where you can open up and say, you know what, I'm really struggling. My marriage, my children, my finances, my addiction to pornography or alcohol. I mean, it is in the small groups, the growth groups. That is where the rubber meets the road. That's where you can uh, find a safe place. you got to cultivate these safe places for church members to open up and say, this is who I am. Please accept me and love me for where I'm at in my spiritual journey and help me grow in the love of Jesus. And so holistic small groups are a wonderful way to do this. These are groups that can meet on a week-by-week -week basis. You can have growth groups and you can have life groups. Now, growth groups are more like in the home kind of Bible study. You can meet in a Starbucks. You can meet in a church classroom. But most likely have it in a home setting where a church member has a, a living room that can hold up to 12 to 15 people and you're going to meet there on a weekly basis. Get there, uh, have some good, some, maybe some food to snack on, some fellowship, and then get into the Bible. Study the Bible, study a good book, hold each other accountable, have a time to share and pray together. And so this is week to week and it's in the home. And you can, there's so many materials out there on how to have uh, successful growth groups. Uh, here's one little book called Community Life 101. You know, it's just, it's just a little book on how to have a successful growth group in one's home. And so getting the most out of your small group experience. And so this will give you ideas on how to have. And, and, and this is just one resource. All right, just one resource in the this, uh, the in the sea of books in the world of, of, of literature you'll find so many other good books out there to help you uh, train your church members to teach you how to have a successful small group or growth group in your home now that's a growth group you can also have life groups life groups could be a, a Sunday morning flag football team or you know sporting event uh, softball it could be a, a knitting or crocheting uh, club it could be a book club it could be a bike riding club uh, these are uh, these are Christian uh, centered, Christ centered uh, events that can begin with prayer, where cussing is not allowed, where Jesus is uplifted, and where people can connect to each other and most of all to God. And so, but most of all, let's focus on the, the growth groups, the small groups. This is where people can find a safe environment so they can learn how to be like Jesus, where they can be held accountable to the spiritual growth that God wants for each and every one of us. Now, like I said, there's so many good books out there. You have this one here by Russell Burrell, Natural Church Development, which I showed you. But most of all, the best book to go to is the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. That's where you're going to find uh, stories about the early disciples, the early church in Acts. You know, take that. Study it. Study what it means to be a church that's on fire. A church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And then begin to prayerfully develop growth groups. Now they should be regional. It should be uh, by neighborhoods or it should be by, by cities. People shouldn't have to drive in 20 miles to go to a growth group. I mean, they're already tired. They're already beaten down. It should be a local group where people meet in the home for prayer, for food, for fellowship, and for Bible study. For support to grow spiritually. And uh, it needs to be on a weekly basis. Maybe have it from uh, the fall when school begins to uh, graduation when school is out. And then uh, suspend the growth group and then start up a bunch of life groups throughout the summer. Camping, backpacking, white water rafting, uh, whatever your, your interest is. Develop uh, life groups uh, to keep the church, member, uh, the church members together and growing as a church. And so I want to encourage you to, to develop some growth groups for your church. Uh, South Tulsa, Oklahoma Adventist Church uh, has, is a good example of a church. They have, when I visited that church, they have a, 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 like a, all these little cards, if you will. Uh, they're in these little slots on the wall. And you could walk up to it and you could see all the different growth groups that they have. They must have like 12 or more, 12 to 15 growth groups. And people can walk up there and they can choose a growth group. They can learn about it and get involved. And so I encourage you to talk to your pastor, talk to your church leaders, your church board, and talk about this 
natural church development, eight characteristics of a healthy, growing church. We need to become healthy, growing churches that are on fire, sharing the gospel message with the world around us. Hey, let me know if you have any questions. This is a series called Seeds for Revival. We cannot force a revival to take place, but we can prepare for the revival that God has for us. So hey, contact me if you have any questions, and let us begin a journey of seeing our church being truly revived in these last days. Take care, and God bless.